On the ancient island of Crete, King Minos faced a unique dilemma. Pasiphae's wife had given birth to the Minotaur, a half-man, half-bull creature, the product of divine punishment. To house this being, Minos needed a particular place, a labyrinth from which the Minotaur could not escape and simultaneously hide from the world's view. For this task, Minos summoned Daedalus, known throughout the Aegean, for his architectural and invention skills. Daedalus accepted the commission, aware of the challenge of building such a complex labyrinth. Daedalus, together with his son Icarus, immersed himself in the task. The labyrinth he devised was an engineering marvel, with endless twists and turns, crisscrossing corridors and secret passages known only to him. The maze construction was a monumental work, taking years to complete. During this time, Daedalus immersed himself in his work, paying little attention to anything else, including his son growing up in the shadow of the labyrinth's walls. Once completed, the labyrinth was a masterpiece of design and confusion. The Minotaur was locked inside, and the labyrinth served its purpose perfectly. However, Daedalus' success became its prison. King Minos, fearful that the secret of the labyrinth might be revealed to the world, decided that neither Daedalus nor Icarus could leave Crete. Thus, the genie and his son were trapped on the island, with their freedom taken away as the price for their exceptional skill and creativity. Trapped on Crete, Daedalus spent his days contemplating the birds flying freely over the walls that held him back. This constant vision of freedom inspired him deeply. Watching the birds became a daily ritual, a moment of mental escape that enlivened his ingenuity and creativity. During this routine, a bold idea began to take shape in his mind. He realized that the only escape route was through the sky, a space that was not controlled by any king or guard. This revelation prompted him to work secretly, devoting his nights to meticulous planning. Daedalus immersed himself in the design process, testing materials, calculating angles, and weighing every detail precisely. The challenge was monumental. Not only did he have to create something that could fly, but it also had to be safe and manageable, especially for Icarus, who did not possess his father's experience or knowledge. With each new dawn, his resolve strengthened. Every feather picked up, and every piece of wax molded brought Daedalus closer to his goal. Although Icarus did not know all the details of his father's plan, he shared the longing for freedom. He was motivated by the gleam of hope in Daedalus' eyes. Together, in their confinement, their relationship grew stronger, united by a shared desire to return home. In the depths of his captivity, Daedalus began his masterpiece. He collected feathers of different sizes with meticulous precision during his walks through the palace garden. The larger ones would form the base of the wings, while the smaller ones would fill in the spaces, creating a smooth, aerodynamic surface. Each feather was carefully selected and prepared, a testament to Daedalus' skill and creativity. The construction of the wings was a slow and careful process. Daedalus used wax to bind the feathers together heating it until it became malleable enough to work with. With each feather attached, the wings began to take shape, revealing their potential for flight. Although the project was fraught with risk, it was the only hope for freedom for him and his son. This act of desperation was becoming a functional work of art, a fusion of nature and human ingenuity. Finally, the wings were finished. Daedalus adjusted them first, feeling the weight and texture of the feathers against his skin. Then, carefully, he showed Icarus how to use his. He explained how to move his arms to make the most of the wind and warned him of the dangers of the sun and the sea. Young Icarus listened with fascination and a little fear, aware of the incredible challenge ahead of them. Father and son were preparing for the most critical flight of their lives. Their wings already adjusted, and Daedalus and Icarus had prepared for their great escape. As dawn illuminated the sky, they stood at the edge of a cliff. Daedalus looked up at Icarus, his eyes reflecting both hope and concern. With a last glance at the walls that had been their prison, they both launched themselves into the air. The wind caressed their faces as they ascended, their wings flapping steadily and gracefully. Daedalus led the way, ever vigilant, making sure his son followed close behind. As they soared, the island of Crete was reduced to a speck in the vast ocean. Icarus, marveling at the sight, 
was flooded with a sense of freedom and joy he had never experienced. They flew over the blue sea, where the ships seemed like tiny dots in the distance. Aware of the risks, Daedalus kept a careful balance, neither too high so that the sun would not damage the wings nor too low to avoid brushing against the waves. But Icarus, young and exuberant, began to feel a growing euphoria, which impelled him to defy the limits his father had imposed on him. With each flap of his wings, Icarus ventured higher, captivated by the sky and the bright sun. Seeing that his son was flying away, Daedalus shouted for him to come down, but his warnings were lost in the wind. The young man, overwhelmed by the thrill of flight and the world's beauty from this new perspective, continued to ascend, oblivious to the danger that lurked. His father, increasingly worried, tried to follow him, but he knew the wings could not resist the sun's proximity. While Daedalus maintained a steady and cautious flight, his son Icarus, captivated by the thrill of flight, began to climb higher into the sky. The young boy, marveling at the sense of freedom and the breathtaking view of the vast ocean below, was carried away by the euphoria of the moment. As Icarus ascended, he flew closer and closer to the sun, forgetting his father's warnings about the dangers of flying too high. The sunlight shone brightly, bathing Icarus in a golden glow and inviting him to climb even higher. As Icarus soared, the sun's heat grew more intense. Soon, the tragedy began to unfold. The wax that held his wing feathers together began to melt. At first, Icarus did not notice the change, but soon, the feathers started to loosen, one by one, and his wings grew weaker. Terrified, he tried to maintain his flight, flapping desperately, but his efforts were in vain without the feathers. Flying at a safe distance, Daedalus realized the danger too late and shouted warnings to his son, but his words were lost in the wind. Icarus' end was as dramatic as his ascent. The wings, now stripped of most of their feathers, could no longer support him, and he began to plummet toward the sea. His screams of fear mingled with the roar of the wind as he fell. Icarus hit the blue waters, which closed over him with a deadly calm. After arriving at where Icarus had fallen, Daedalus found only a few feathers floating on the surface and the painful emptiness of loss. His flight to freedom had ended in tragedy, marking the end of Icarus' ambitious journey. After Icarus' tragic end, Daedalus, driven by sadness and guilt, reaches the safety of dry land. The pain of losing his son is overwhelming, and as he stands on the seashore, he looks up to the sky, remembering the laughter and dreams shared with Icarus. He knows his genius and ambition have come at too high a price in his heart. He built a temple in honor of Apollo, the god of light and truth, to seek solace and redemption. He hangs up the wings, that invention that promised so much but also brought misfortune, as an offering to the god, vowing to renounce the pursuit of challenges that defy the limits of nature. Deadless decision to hang up the wings is an act of mourning and a gesture of respect towards the forces of nature and the gods. He realizes that, in his longing to return home, he defied the laws of nature, a mistake that cost his son his life. This realization leads him to reflect on his humanity and the limits even the most extraordinary mortals must respect. During this period of introspection, Deadless devotes himself to teaching and sharing his skills with the locals, passing on his knowledge but staying away from the excesses of pride that once characterized him. Eventually, the island where Daedalus lands is named Icaria in memory of his son, 